Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy Adrian here, welcome back to the channel. Guild Wars 2 has dropped the trailer for The Living World Season 4 Episode 4 titled A Star to Guide Us and it is coming out September 18th. I'm pretty hyped for this next episode, episode 4, and I'll share my reasons why. But first of all, I want to say if you're new to Guild Wars 2 and you're just starting out and you haven't got to a point in the Living World Season 4 where the current content is at, then there's going to be some spoiler talk in this video, so I highly suggest not watching this and coming back later after you have done episode 3 maybe. So with that out of the way, let's talk about some episode 4. Starting with the trailer, pretty cool, we get to see more cinematics of the Commander and Orin, which I want to get into later on because it looks like Orin's going to be playing quite the major role this episode. But first, let's start with all the features coming with A Star to Guide Us, Episode 4. The new map is called Jahai Bluffs. There's going to be a new mastery, Bond of Vigor. There's a new raid for all your raiders out there called the Mythrite Gambit. There's a new upgradable armor set, and this one's pretty interesting. It's a new legendary scepter, and I can't pronounce this, but I'm going to try. Zuquadl. I hope I got that one right. And finally, the new upgradable instance, Sun's Refuge. Starting off with the story because that's what I'm most excited and looking forward to. I really am dying to know what happens next considering that epic finale we got in episode 3. Spoiler alert here, when Orin kills off Balawa Joko at the end of that instance. And at that point, the current threat to Tyria and us is eliminated. So what happens next? What have we established from then on? In my review of episode 3, which you can watch by clicking the card on the top right or in the description box below, I kind of threw it out there that Orin now will definitely have to play a big part because she's come in right at the end there and killed off Balawa Joko are there repercussions of that? And if not, then why did ArenaNet feel the need to put her in a spotlight in that way? If it's just for comedy relief, then it doesn't really sit too well with me. But from the trailer, if you guys have watched it, you'll see that Aurene does play a big part because she started to have visions. And we, the commander, want to explore that and figure out what those things are and where that might lead us. So for story expectations, I'm hoping to get more insight about what happens to Aurene or what's going to happen to Aurene and what is she doing. What are these visions she's showing us? And more importantly, what do Aurene and have in store for Aurene? Because we've spent all this time, even prior to the Heart of Thorns expansion, building up her relationship with the commander building up her relationship with us. We've seen her grow. We've been through a lot, the both of us. So for this episode, I'm hoping for something extraordinary here and if she's going to have a change. And what I mean by a change is that will she be on our side at the end of the episode or is she going to go off and do her own thing? Is she going to go rogue? So many possibilities. I don't know where ArenaNet's going with this, but I'm really excited to see what happens. Outside of the story, of course, we got Jahai Bluffs as the map, and in terms of landscape content, I think it's safe to say we can expect the usual, like, bounties and adventures and races. But it's the new upgradable instant Sun's Refuge that I'm really interested about, and if you haven't watched Wooden Potatoes videos on this, I highly suggest you go do so, in addition to checking out all the other Guild Wars 2 partners out there and their take on Sun's Refuge. I personally like the idea and the sound of this, and I talked about this in my Guild Wars 2 6th anniversary video, of a constant place that kind of grows with us as we progress through the main story. So just to recap, Sun's Refuge is a personal character instance which is accessible in the episode. And the instance will change based on your progress and actions in episode 4, and potentially in the future as well. So it's going to serve as a content hub. So I'm assuming throughout the story, us players will have to first of all rebuild the settlement, make it inhabitable again, and then the next step is to unlock NPCs and bring people who are with us, who believe in our cause, to come to the settlement, and they then will be giving us content to do. Like for instance, some NPCs will give us new collections or new rewards or just things to do on the episode 4 map and hopefully it will continue for future episodes as well. And as I've said, this is something that I really like. This is an organic thing that kind of grows with your character and it will be a real shame if it's just for one episode. And I hope that in future episodes, Sun Refuge just doesn't become a forgotten thing and us as players no longer go back there to do various different things. Which also means that I hope ArenaNet has done some really awesome stuff for Sun's Refuge like adding some convenience stuff in there, making it a player hub, put a repair anvil, maybe let us unlock some crafting stations too while we're at it. I mean, I don't want it to directly replace the major city and town hubs that us players visit on a daily basis to do the various basic things, but having the option of Sun's Refuge being another location for your daily needs would definitely help make us players feel like, yeah, we should totally spend more time here. And because of the amount of effort that we put into this episode in terms of unlocking Sun's Refuge and rebuilding up again and getting all these new features in this instance, it should mean something to us and it's something that we would like to bring forward with us throughout the Living World Season 4 and beyond. 
Next thing I want to talk about is this new upgradable armor set. And I gotta admit, when I first heard this, I'm like, uh-oh, what is that supposed to mean? And because I've been moving around MMOs a lot in the past month for reviews and other content, the first thing that came to my mind was, uh-oh, I hope it's not like Azerite Armor in World of Warcraft or some other system like that where it's gonna be a time sink that you have to put in to upgrade the various pieces of armor or whatever. But having looked around for more information, I kind of agree with what the other content creators are saying, especially Dolphy and people like that, where this new armor set is going to work similarly to the armors in World vs. World and PvP. So for example, in Wuv Wuv, if you wanted that cool commander flaming backpack thing you start at the lower tier and then you upgrade that to exotic and then ascend it and so on and on so if this is going to follow a similar method then yeah it is going to be a time sink of some sort but it should be worth doing if the cosmetic is cool and if the stats are great well you can pick your own stats i'm pretty sure of that but still it's something to work towards it's probably part of a collection it is part of a collection as for the other stuff the new mastery bond of vigor sounds pretty interesting sounds like something we'd be using for our mounts the new raid sounds interesting too if and when i get the time i'll be jumping into raids and overall Pretty damn excited for a new episode, it's about time. The last thing I want to talk about before I go though is this new item that made its debut in the gem store on September the 11th and it is the world boss portal device. For 400 gems, this device will put world boss notifications in your chat box and teleport you to current and upcoming world bosses or at least to the nearest waypoint even if it is contested. I don't know about you guys, but this was an instant buy for me. This is extremely handy, especially for convenience reasons. And I know there are websites out there, Guild Wars 2 Timer and all these other sites. And there's even, it's an overlay that kind of tells you when the next boss is happening and everything. I use that a lot for world bosses and stuff, but having this thing is pretty dang handy, especially for getting you to contest at waypoints, which just cuts out that balanced travel time of having to go to a farther waypoint and then just riding on your mount all the way to the boss. And the fact that it's 400 gems, which is cheaper than I thought something like this would be, because it's super convenient. I expected this to be about 800 gems, but 400 I think is a pretty good deal. And yes, I'm going to piggyback on what a lot of people are saying on some of these sites that this is the type of microtransaction that I really wouldn't mind in a buy-to-play game like this. Convenience item like this is really worth spending gems on. That's my opinion. So anyway, I'm out of here just to reiterate. September 18th is the date for episode 4 of Guild Wars 2's Living World Season 4. A star to guide us is the name of the episode. I will see you guys in game then. In the meantime, feel free to share your thoughts what you're looking for, what are you excited about for the upcoming episode. Hit the like button for more on Guild Wars 2 and MMOs, and feel free to subscribe to my channel for more content. Once again, I'm Jerem Adrian, and I thank you for watching. Hey folks, welcome to the end screen. Thank you very much for watching that video. If you want to watch more, you can click on the cards at the bottom here, and feel free to subscribe to the channel with the button down there, which will give you notifications on all my latest uploads. Later, Gator.